Hey everybody, this is Matt with MathMath.com. Thanks for joining us here today as we talk about central tendency and box and whisker plots. We're in the Common Core Math Standard Probability and Statistics and today we're going to be using random sampling. We're going to be drawing inferences about populations and we're going to be creating plots. Especially these evaluating these probability models. Okay, So, our guiding question is how can we pick a good representation of a set of data? If we got a whole bunch of data, how do we know what's the best way to represent it? Well, today we're going to learn about central tendency, if you haven't already, and box and whisker plots. What on earth is a box or whisker plot? Well, I'm glad you asked because, bam, here is one. If you've ever seen these before, these give you an idea of the mean, the range of data, and a few other things. See, there are two separate data here, and one of them is about uh, a particular salesman Peter and about how many bicycles he sold. Well James sold these many bicycles. Okay, So you might have not really any clue of what these mean but you will by the end of the lesson today. Okay, This is like a graph. It measures both frequency and mean. Let's do it. All right. What's the best fit? Well, when we look at a group of numbers, there are a variety of different ways that we can use to represent it. Okay, So first we're going to talk about just measures of central tendency and what on earth does that mean? Ah, oops, I said it, mean, that's right, mean. You probably heard this before. Mean is basically the average, is the sum of the data divided by the total number of items, okay? Pretty simple. You add them all up, divided by the total items that you actually have, okay? Pretty basic. Mode, any idea what mode is? Mean a la mode. No, we don't add ice cream to it. Mode, it's the number of items in the set of data that occurs the most often. It's that actual item. So you look at a set of data and it, there's only one item that occurs three times, which is the most. That's the mode. It occurs most often. Median. You remember that thing in the middle of the road you don't want to hit when you're driving? That's the median. It's the middle. And when we line up the data in order from least to greatest, it's the middle number. If there's an even number of them, and then you take the middle two and take the mean of it, you take the average. If there's an odd number of data, then you just have a middle. But remember, that's odd because it has an odd one out. Well, that one will be the middle. Whereas if it's even, you got to take the mean of it, okay? And then the last one that we're going to learn about is called the quartile. And you may have never heard of this, but if you think about it, the word court is in it. Remember what that word means? Well, think about quarter. It's the breaking the data up into four different equal parts. Okay, the median is the second quartile. It's the middle of the data. Okay, the median is the middle quartile. It's the second quartile. So let's look at it. Let's talk about available memory on uh, a phone. The amount of space that's on a particular phone or device that you might have. Okay, we made a stem and leaf plot. Again, 7 slash 0 means 70 megabytes. There's a 6 slash 5, so that's 65. This is 70, 75, 75. Just a little refresher on stem and leaf plots, okay? Now, let's think about how can we figure out all of these measures of central tendency, okay? So there's your data. Find the measures of central tendency with each of these guys. Let's do the mean, okay? Remember what you do with the mean? Gotta add them all up, so you can take 65 plus 70, 75, 80, 84, 85, 94. Then you have to count how many leaves there are. There's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Add them all up together, divided by 8, and bam, that is your mean. So our mean is 78.5, okay? That's our mean. Now our mode is the one that occurs most often. Which one of these occurs most often? Well, it looks like right here there's a 0, there's two zeros, and there's three five, four fives. But wait a minute, that's not how we read it from a stem and leaf plot. This means 70, this means 80. So 70 and 80, those only occur once. This is 5, 5, and 5, but this represents 65, 75, 75, and 85. So if you guessed 75, that's the one that occurs most often. Okay, So that's it, 75. Now let me give you just a bit of advice here. If there is no mode, all of them would occur the same amount. So let's just say we had this was 75 and this was 76. There would be no mode. Okay, but let's just say this was 85 and 85, 75 and 75. 75 and 85 would be the mode, or you could actually 
technically say there is no mode because there isn't one that occurs most often. Yes, there's one that occurs more than the others, but there isn't one that occurs most often. And then the median. The median, pretty simple. What we do is we would just cancel. Let's try it here. Cancel, 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 bam, bam. Take the even amount. Oh, wait, oops. There's two left over, so we have to take the mean of those two, okay? So 75 plus 80, there's two items there divided by two. It's 77 and a half, all right? So our mean is, our median, rather, is 77 and a half. Now, quartiles is a little different, okay? Let's try to do the quartiles here together. You've got these data, all right? The median was, again, right there in the middle. The quartile, the lower half here will have one quartile with these guys and then in the upper half you'll have another quartile there so basically what you're doing is you're splitting the group up into two and then you're finding the median here and the median here so you're just doing the median again and again okay and that will give you the first quartile there the 70 and 75 you found the median in between 70 and 75 and then you found the third quartile there, the median in between the 84 and 85. Does that make sense? So you're really just finding the median again and again and again. No big deal. That's pretty simple. All right. Now, first quartile, add those up together. 70 plus 75 divided by 2, 72 and a half. The median we had before. And the quartile, you take the mean, 84 plus 85 divided by 2, 84 and a half. No big deal, right? Now, let's find the measure there's a ten, central tendency here of these stock prices that's changed over 18 days. These are the changes that you had. Would you please find the mean, the median, the mode, and then try finding the quartiles the lower, of the lower half and the upper half, both the first quartile and the third quartile. Now, it's going to be a little different with negative numbers. You still have to line them up from least to greatest, okay? And then when you're finding the mean, you're just adding them all up and then dividing by the total number of items. So we've got 3 by 4, 5, 6 by 18. So there's 18 total. All right. Would you find the mean here, uh, the missing value of the mean? The mean is 0. The missing value is x. Find the missing value. Well, if you think about it, you got to work backwards. You still have to add all these up together, but when you add them all up, there's a total of one, two, three, four, five. There's five items, so it would help to multiply this by five and then add those together, and that would give you the total. Multiply by five and then subtract these guys from that total, and that would give you the x. All right, here are your answers. You ready for them? All right. All right, now box and whisker plots. Let's talk about this. All right, we can put all of this information now into a nice box and whisker plot using this central tendency stuff, okay? So a box or whisker plot is just simply this, a box plot. It's a plot on a number line that shows the least and the greatest values, the first and third quartiles, and the median. Okay, so what is what? Well, there's the box, there's the whiskers, And here's the eyes. It's our little kitty cat. Nope. Seriously, though. All right. Here it is. Box and whisker pot. We've got the median right there in the middle. Okay. The median is right there in the middle. Duh. In the middle. Median. Middle. Median. Middle. That dot right there. Okay. And then draw a little line. And then our maximum value is this guy right here, okay? And then our minimum value is this other guy right here. So this represents the range of data. So we can find the range just by taking the max value and subtracting it there, okay? So there's the minimum, maximum, medium, box, whisker, whisker, plot. And then the first dot there that starts the box is the first quartile, and I bet you can guess what the dot here. That's the third quartile, okay? So first quartile third quartile, and so forth. So what this is going to give you is most of the data that's near the middle. Okay, Most of the data that's near the middle. So here, what are some things we can tell about this plot?
Okay, if you think about it, you got the median is right here. The first quartile is there. Third quartile is there. Maximum value, minimum value. These are heights of particular people. So you start off here. That's the minimum value of the people in the group. This is the maximum value of the height of the people in the group. And then the median is there. All right. So let's make a box and whisker plot of the hours that these many people surveyed spent online per week. Okay. So let's do it. So what I want you to do is try and make this your own. So remember, the first thing you got to do is find the median. Second thing is you got to find the minimum and the maximum value. And then the first and third quartile by finding the med median of the lower half and the median of the upper half. Now you're not going to be able to do this unless you put all of these numbers in order. So do that first, okay? Figure out the lowest and then go put them in order to the biggest. Make sure when you're finally done, when you put everything in order, that you've got You've got 36 numbers, okay? Make sure that you count them. You got 30, oh, not 36, it's 9 by 5, so 45 numbers, okay? All right, here's what it should look like. Should have something like this lowest number there, highest number there, median right there in the middle, first quartile, third quartile. Not too bad, huh? Interesting way to represent data, though, huh? All right, so we've got heights of students here on the left. I want you to make a box and whisker plot of that. Remember, put the items in order. And what about number two? I want you to compare and contrast the two different plots of these two different bicycle reps. What are they saying? What does it mean? They both have the same median, right? But who sold more? All right, so make a box and whisker plot of here. Find the median, first quartile, third quartile, lowest, maximum. And then definitely check it out here. See which one, who, who sold the least amount, maybe in a day or per week. All right, here it is. So there's your box and whisker plot of the different inches there. And notice that both of the sales reps have the same median, but James's numbers are more spread out than Peter's numbers. All right. Well, that's it. Can you answer this question about how do we pick a good representation of a set of data? What kind of models can we make, especially having to do with centrals of, uh, measures of central tendency? Using those box and whisker plots will help you out. Definitely represent your data well. All right. Well, this is Matt with MattsMath.com. Thanks for joining us here today as we talked about box and whisker plots. Check us out on Facebook at Solving Math Problems and on Twitter at Matt's Math. And enjoy math.